Hi, my name is Frank Schaefer. I grew up in the evangelical world as the sidekick and nepotistic appendage to my father, Francis Schaefer, who in the 70s and 80s was instrumental with C. Everett Koop, the Surgeon General for Ronald Reagan, in organizing the evangelical anti-abortion movement. I know the religious right. In fact, I know the right. Um, I have had personal notes from George W. Bush. Uh, I've had personal notes from Ronald Reagan when my father died. Um, letters from Barbara Bush on several occasions when she and her husband were reading books by our family, etc. But even as someone connected with the religious right back into those days, who understood the hypocrisy of what we were doing in our anti-feminist crusade, I am shocked today by the fact that we now have a president that the Republican Party has not repudiated calling for a race war, violence against black Americans in reaction to a group of white police officers in Minneapolis murdering a black man not allegedly killing him, killing him in full view of the public, taking nine minutes with a knee to his neck to achieve what lynching did just a few decades ago in so much of America to black men and women with a rope. A few days after this happened and protests began, white militia members armed with AK-47s and AR-15s wearing flak jackets appeared in the street to patrol against the black and white protesters to keep order. Those are the folks President Trump is counting on to do the shooting. And he's already told them that they are good people and approved these same type of people, if not the very same men, storming a state house to intimidate a woman governor whose crime was asking people to wear masks and do social distancing in order to protect other people's lives. And now he has sent them an uncoded, open, blatant message about shooting down protesters to them and also to killer rogue cops, saying not only am I on your side with a long history of pardoning criminals who I happen to like, but I am telling you that the shooting will start. The strange thing is a lot of those folks who are carrying weapons say that they are using a Second Amendment right to defend American civil liberties against the state. And yet here agents of the state have murdered a man in broad daylight as they have hundreds of times in recent years, killing black men and women and others with apparent impunity, with rare prosecutions, and yet, when the, quote, shooting starts, the people who are going to be shot are the protesters. You know, if you didn't want riots like this, Donald Trump, what you would do is denounce what happened, call for the arrest of the murdering cops, have them in jail, prosecuted quickly, sentenced to life for murder, and you would find that there would be a lot less public demonstrations and riots when things like this happen. But it is the absence of justice that has brought us to this point. Make no mistake, the evangelical world from which I come now supports an outright racist calling for a race war, not from the fringe of society or some talk radio host, but the President of the United States. That's where we are. The next election is not an election to throw out some individual we disagree with, as I disagreed with George W. Bush, even though my family knew him and I knew him when he sent my Marine son to war in Afghanistan and then in Iraq on those fool's missions we sent all our military into in these unwinnable protracted conflicts. But he did that, wrong as he was, not as someone calling for a racist reaction as Trump is calling for in our own neighborhoods. Trump is shocking, but what is devastatingly shocking is the fact that he still has any supporters. If you are a Trump supporter today, you are a racist calling for a race war because you support a man who is a racist calling for a race war. If you are an evangelical Trump supporter, you are no longer a Christian, period. It isn't a question of personal opinion. 
but of action and activity and supporting someone who calls for bloodshed, who excuses thugs, who calls people who protest thugs, who has criminalized being a journalist to the point where those police officers felt safe arresting a black CNN journalist credentialed, nonviolent, doing his job with a credentialed crew in broad daylight in the street where their fellow police officers had murdered a man days before with impunity. Make no mistake, we are at a crossroad. Trump is a man of blood. He is a traitor to the Constitution of the United States that calls for a presidential leadership that represents all Americans, doesn't slice and dice us into warring factions. He has not just betrayed the black community, he has betrayed those gun-toting buffoons who he has encouraged with their Second Amendment solutions because mark my words, the day's coming when there will be bloodshed between them and civilians or them and other police officers or even the military be it on Trump's head. He has opened the Pandora's box to a level of chaos in this country, 100,000 COVID deaths spun there by his incompetence and his denial, a crashing economy, a series of lies, self-dealing with his own family, Jared Kushner and these other criminal elements of the mob called the Trump clan, and now outright playing the race card, not in some coded manner the way Richard Nixon did, but directly calling for bloodshed in our streets, hoping to gather around him the moronic evangelical support of traitors to America like Franklin Graham, Jerry Falwell Jr., Ralph Reed, and these other, quote, Christian leaders who have sold their soul for access to power. So much for the cause of the pro-life movement now in the hands of the Ku Klux Klan sitting in the White House. God damn Donald Trump. My name is Frank Schaefer.